Hello everyone, I am Dr. T. Ramesh. In this video, I am going to discuss about the principle, construction, working and IV characteristics of solar cell. We know that in the last two decades, the share of solar energy to the world's total energy supply has grown significantly. Energy from the sun is the most abundant and absolutely freely available energy. Hence, the field of investigation of high efficient solar cells is most important. Coming to the solar cell principle point of view, solar cell is an optoelectronic device that can able to convert an optical input into current output. And a solar cell works on the principle of photovoltaic effect. That is, voltage generates when material exposed to light. And it can be constructed by using open biased PN junction diode when semiconductor materials exposed to light, the sum of the photons of light ray absorbed by the semiconductor crystal, which causes a significant number of charge carriers in the crystal. This is the basic principle for producing electricity with solar cell. Coming to the construction, a solar cell comprises P-type and N-type semiconductors with different electrical properties joined together. The joint between these two semiconductors are called as PN junction and it is shown in the figure. Here, the top layer is N-type semiconductor and its thickness is thin as you compare with the bottom layer P-type semiconductor. So that the incident photon may easily reach the PN junction. Generally, some of the incident photons may reflect from the top surface. To avoid this, an anti-reflection coating is placed on the top of the semiconductor. Metal electrodes are attached to the front and back sides. These are called as front electrode and back electrode. Coming to the working. When light falls on the solar cell, the EMF is generated across the cell and it is possible by three basic process. One is generation of charge carriers. Second one is the separation of charge carriers. And third one, collection of charge carriers. Here, we need to understand this process clearly. First one, that is generation of charge carriers. When light of photon with suitable energy instant on the semiconductor and it is absorbed by the depletion region and it can able to create one electron one hole pair electron hole pair is created for each and every light photon strikes the depletion region this is called as generation of charge carriers that the generation of charge carriers depends upon the number of photon strikes the region. Second one, separation of charge carriers. Once the electron hole pair generates in the depletion region, the electric field of the depletion region separates the electrons and holes. The electrons are swept to the N side and holes are swept to the P side. As we know that holes move in the electric field direction here the electric field direction is towards the P side because the holes are also moving towards the P side. On the other hand, electrons move in the opposite direction of the electric field because of that the generated electrons move towards the N side and generated holes are moved towards the P side. And third one, collection of charge carriers. The, elect the electrons reaching the N side are collected by the front electrode and which is attached to the N side and the holes reaching the P sides are collected by the back electrode which is connected to the P side. Thus, the P side becomes more positive and the N side becomes more negative giving rise to photovoltage. When external load is connected, a photo current IL flows through the load. Coming to the IV characteristics, by Applying 
no in, non intensity of light from a halogen lamp is made to fall on the solar cell by varying the resistance we are measuring initially voltage and then the current is measured by using ohms law that is i equivalence to v by r this is the iv characteristics of the solar cell and here the terms three terms are important in the iv characteristics diagram one is the open circuit voltage second one is the short circuit current and third one is the maximum power point here the voltage is on the x axis and the current in the y axis here first term that is open circuit here this one is related to the open circuit another is related to the short circuit if the connections of the the connections of the device is not connected to the any external circuit that is called as open circuit here there is no possibility to pump the current through the external circuit in that particular situation the current is zero then the voltage is maximum here the open circuit voltage is nothing but the solar cell is not connected to the any external load in that particular situation the current in that circuit is zero and the maximum voltage is generated that is called as open circuit voltage that is represented with the voc and short circuit the short circuit is nothing but the positive and negative leads are joined together then it is nothing but short circuited in that particular moment the potential value is zero and the current reached to the maximum value that is represented with the isc the product of these two quantities like v voc and isc gives the ideal power of the cell the maximum useful power is nothing but the area of the largest rectangle that can be formed in vi curve so by knowing the both the voltage and current the product is always gives the power that is nothing but which set of coordinate gives the maximum power that should be considered as the maximum power point by using that coordinates we are taking the largest rectangle that gives the maximum useful power of the solar cell and with addition of these three terms we have to know about the another two important terms one is the fill factor fill factor gives the information related to the quality of the solar cell and it is a ratio between the maximum output level or power maximum output power to the, the product of voc and isc another term that is efficiency how much it can able to convert optical input into the current output that gives the efficiency generally the efficiency of the solar cell is lower it is around 10 to 12 percent or it may higher depends upon the selection of the materials the solar cell efficiency depends here maximum solar cell efficiency is around 20 percent and the criteria for metals materials to be used in the solar cell so which type of materials are suitable for the construction of solar cell that is one of the most important topic uh, to manufacture the solar cell first one that is the solar cell is generally manufactured by using the semiconducting materials and the semiconductor material have band gap from in the range like 1 electron volt to 1.8 electron volt 1.8 electron volt because the solar radiation spectra is maximum around 1.5 electron volt hence the material with band gap 1.5 electron volt in and around is likely to give better solar conversion efficiency because it can able to absorb more solar irradiance and coming to the irradiation effect on the photo current then obviously irradiation increases the photo current from this diagram we can observe that so the photo current is keep on increases with respect to the solar radiation so it starts from 200 watt per meter square and it is ends with the 1000 watt per meter square so as solar radiation increases and the photo current is also increases and with addition of the semiconductor material a semiconductor must have op high optical absorption then only it can able to absorb the instant photons and it must have high electrical conductivity then the generated charge carriers can easily move from one terminal to the and one side to the another side and fourth point there is the raw material must be available 
in abundance or the cost of the material must be low then only the construction cost or maintenance cost is low and example for solar cell materials are silicon and gallium arsenic thanks for watching if you like this video make sure to subscribe for more thank you